CataractCoach.com, resident cataract case number 13 review. So what advice can you offer this young surgeon training? So this is not my resident, I'm not the attending, but it's a nice video and I think we can all learn from it. So case number 13, this is a pretty tough case for case 13. They're starting off making that first paracentesis. We've edited the video, so we're going to get this whole thing done in about five minutes, so bear with me here. And you can see there's a lot of subconjunctival chemosis and bleeding. That's probably from a retrobulbar block. You can see the pupil size there, bit on the small side, probably at most a five millimeter pupil. Cataract looks pretty opaque, pretty dense. And so this is not going to be a simple case. So case number 13, you can attempt this case, but you better have a really good attending who's helping you. So Incision looks um, pretty good. Hit the limbal vessels. Maybe a little bit on the short side, but I'll take it. For case 13, it's pretty darn good. Now, we're obviously going to speed up the video here to get through a lot of it. And not sure why we're blocking the video there, but let's take a look here. Here's the tripan blue dye. Of course, that's going to be needed. Now, the key in this case is you need to get that pupil expanded a little bit more. Hopefully, put some phenylephrine or epinephrine or something in the eye to get that bigger. And um, looks like some more viscoelastic going in. You can get some viscomedriasis. That is helpful. And now, uh, looks like needle decompression. Make sure it's not an intumescent case. Again, tough case for number 13. Draping looks pretty good. Eye staying in primary. And now there's no lens uh, milk or liquefied lens cortex coming out of the bag. Well, that's a good sign. And here comes a big rexus. I like that. You definitely need the rexus. Just about as big as that pupil. That's awfully good for case 13. To be very frank, this was submitted as case number 13, but that Rexus looked pretty good with only a few regrabs. That's, you must be amazing at this level to have a case like that. All right, let's see what we do for the FACO part now. So FACO probe going in, here comes the chopper, and we're going to do a groove down the middle, looks like. Another groove, another groove, and... The grooves look pretty good. The eye's pretty much staying in primary. The scope's reasonably centered. Obviously, again, we're speeding this up to get through the case. Now the patient's really dancing around a lot. Lots of motion from the patient. Lots of movement. Again, this is, remember, the cataract surgery is a delicate thing, and cataract surgery is not just the surgery. It's the everything. So you got to get the patient appropriately calm and relaxed and sedated if you need to. You got to have the head taped down. You got to do good anesthesia for your patient. All right, continuing back, I did like the retraction or pulling out of the eye when the patient got a little too squirrely. That was obviously a smart move. So groove again, and that's a good groove. Deeper in the middle, shallow in the periphery. I'm having a hard time believing this is case 13 because the skills are quite good. Just look at that crack right there. And then the rotation immediately. Ah. Uh, Okay, I will tell you, this case is going beautifully. I like it so far. That's a good divide and conquer. But either this surgeon has done a thousand prior SICS surgeries or manual small incision surgeries and has good hands there because of that. And this may be the 13th Vago case in that case. Or if this is a U.S. resident, there's no way it's your 13th case. I'm going to call it straight up like that. But hey, that's the fun of these videos, right? To learn. Look at the chop, sub chopping the pieces, taking those down. The eye stays in primary pretty much the whole case. This is a pretty good one. This is a good case. I like it. So if you're a resident who's watching this, do not expect to have this level of performance in case 13. And certainly not a U.S. resident because we don't do a whole lot of manual small incision surgery before getting into FACO. Most programs go right into FACO. Nice cleaning up of that nucleus. Boom, it is done. Patient's still moving around a little bit, still a little squirrely on the patient, but not terrible. And um, let's see how the case finishes. So if you're starting off and doing case 13, truly you need to work with your attending surgeon to choose a very appropriate case. If you are doing around case 13 and you're a resident training somewhere, choose a patient who's much calmer. That's number one. Number two, a patient who can get a little bit more sedation. Number three, make sure you get a great retrobulbar block. Number four, tape the head down so you're not wrestling like this the whole time. Number five, the patient have a much more bigger dilation, at least six, seven millimeters, hopefully even eight millimeters. Make your life easy. The, nu now, the next one, the, the nucleus should not be super dense. I would make sure that nucleus is maybe three plus NS instead of a white cataract. 
And I think if you start with that, I think you'll do better. Nucleus is out. Look at that cortex cleaned up. Lens in the bag, one-handed, no counterfixation of the eye. Yeah, that's my decision on this one. In my subjective opinion, as the cataract coach, with a whole, whole lot of experience, and not just doing surgery, experience in teaching cataract surgery, there's no way this is a case 13. There's just no way. So certainly not for a U.S. or Canadian resident or any of these types of places that follow a similar training program. But I do like the case at the end here. It looks pretty darn good. Time to finish this thing up, and let's just stop watching here. We've seen enough. Thanks for watching, guys.